Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Well, on behalf of Keio University, I'd like to welcome all of you to Tsuroka City and uh, Keio University, especially for those who came from abroad. Um, this campus is a satellite campus of Keio University, and most other Keio campuses are located in Tokyo area. So let me start with my talk with a couple of slides on Keio. Uh, it, first of all, it pronounces like Keio, and uh, it is the oldest university in Japan and Eastern Asia. And uh, it has um, a medical school, law school, um, high school, it has everything. And uh, <coughs> two popular prime ministers are Keio graduates. And, <coughs> and of course, there are many uh, Japanese prime ministers. But if you look at the uh, days, most of them are very short lived. <laughs> but if you look at the Hashimoto and the Koizumi, you can see Keio boys are very tough. <laughs> And also two um, next prime minister candidates, uh, Ishiba and Ishihara are KO graduates as well. Um, Yukichi Fukuzawa is the founder of KO University, and he is very popular in Japan, not only because he founded KO, but also he is on the very important document which is this. So every Japanese must respect him every day. <coughs> okay, so this institute was founded uh, in some 15 years ago, and I have been in charge of this institute since then. And we, we have been focusing on data-driven systems biology. At that time, there was very few people are talking about data-driven biology, or quantitative systems biology, or multi-omic systems biology, or integrative systems biology. They all mean the same to me. And also, we have been focusing on metabolomics, because there were very few people even talking about metabolomics at that time. This institute boasts the world's largest scale platform for metabolome analysis allow us to introduce the future shaping possibilities of metabolome technology. In the year of this institute's founding in 2001, it gave birth to metabolome technology that largely changed all subsequent biochemistry research. Professor Tomoyoshi Soka developed the project under the commission of Director General Professor Tomita. The interesting point is that we can measure a thousand metabolites inside the cell within 30 minutes. They are able to measure up to 50 samples at once. This instrument was developed by the combination of two techniques. In this marriage of techniques, capillary electrophoresis, CE, confers rapid analysis and efficient resolution, and mass spectrometry, MS, provides highly selective sensitivity. Simultaneous anionic metabolite analysis was made possible by the use of a different type of material for the capillary. Conventionally, CEMS has been applied for only cationic species. The reason is, when using a general fused silica capillary, electroosmotic flow was generated and moved toward the capillary inlet, which created a gap in the capillary exit, resulting in a current drop. This is a serious problem. Professor Soga overcame this problem by employing a cationic polymer coated capillary to reverse electroosmotic flow. This approach enabled successive anionic metabolome analysis without deleterious current drops. The measured data is analyzed with original software that outputs data on about 3,000 metabolites. We have measured the saliva of the healthy controls in the patients, and this is an example for a certain metabolite. The red line shows the patients, and the blue line shows the healthy controls. And you can see there's a big difference between the two groups. We are currently conducting intensive research to improve measurement time. Additionally, we have developed several to dozen fold increase in sensitivity. 
This institute will continue to lead the world in metabolome analysis technology. And uh, this is the first uh, paper on large-scale data-driven systems biology. Uh, we published this in 2007. What we did is we incubated E. coli in different conditions and then measured metabolome, proteome, transcriptome, and fraxome, not only for white type E. coli, but also uh, single deletion mutants. And we constructed um, all possible 4,000 single deletion mutant of E. coli. And uh, <clears throat> for uh, each of them, we measured multi-omics uh, data. And um, we, we published the uh, database as well. OK, now we have four spin-out company, companies. And uh, I uh, edited two minutes video for each of them. So uh, I'll show you. Well, first of all, HMT, Human Metabolism Technologies, um, <coughs> biomarkers for major depression major depression. Shedding light on the challenges in disease diagnosis and life science research, Human Metabolome Technologies Inc., or HMT, is the first venture company launched by IAB Keio University. HMT has been providing metabolome analysis service using CEMS for many pharmaceutical, cosmetic, and food companies, as well as research institutions and became listed on the Tokyo Stock Exchange Mother's Market in 2013. We have found some biomarkers of diseases by CEMS, including psychiatric disorders, liver disorders, and cancers. And we already published the results in some paper. HMT is currently in the spotlight for the development of their biomarker for identifying depression disorder patients. The increasing number depression patients is a global crisis. While Japan alone has almost 960,000 patients, there are 350 million people worldwide suffering from depression. Due to the absence of any objective indicator for measuring depression, diagnosis and treatment of the disease has been difficult. By comparing the blood metabolomic profiles of depression patients and healthy subjects, HMT successfully discovered a promising biomarker for identifying the disease, which is called phosphothenolamine, or PEA. PEA is presumably released into the blood as a degradation product of phosphoanandamide in the brain. For some reason, the amount of anandamide in the brain decreases in a depressed state, and so does the PEA in response. The PEA levels in depression patients were significantly lower than those in healthy subjects. For the development of this method for distinguishing depression sufferers from healthy individuals, HMT has obtained patients in Japan, China, and the US. And we will continue to develop other biomarkers. Okay, okay so then uh, next, uh, saliva tech. They are trying to uh, commercialized saliva test for detecting cancer. According to Professor David Wan, saliva is a mirror of the body. Saliva samples are stored at minus 80 degrees. This institute's saliva test is able to detect various types of cancers with high precision using this low volume saliva sample. The project started five years ago and now Various clinical studies have been conducted and innovations in analytical technologies are being made every day. In collaboration with Professor Wong at UCLA, Project Associate Professor Sugimoto's group developed a new technology to detect cancer from saliva in 2010. They focused on three kinds of cancer, oral, breast, and pancreas. The metabolomics technologies identified 57 metabolites, such as taurine, which can discriminate cancer patients from healthy controls. Thousands of saliva samples have been sent by various medical and dental institutes to target an even wider variety of cancers, like lung, colon, and other cancers. 
The developed saliva test also detects gastric cancer. This indicates the potential to use saliva testing for detecting multiple cancers. Our saliva test found gastric cancer, even though in some cases, tumor marker tests showed negative result. This is one example. The saliva test identified an intramucosal carcinoma, despite the negative result using a gastro camera. A salivate test identified this patient with negative blood-based tumor markers. Our saliva test does not focus on genetic information. Instead, we're testing current status of human body by using metabolomics technology. The saliva test developed here is showing strong promise to contribute to the future of preventative medicine. Okay, then uh, the next, the blood, saliva, and then stool. This video will introduce a one-of-a-kind technology for stool analysis. When the stomach is in bad shape, it makes one susceptible to a variety of ailments. This is something everyone has felt, but for which the scientific mechanism had yet to be revealed. But now there is a way to evaluate people's health condition from only a small fecal sample. Human feces contains information of host health conditions and disease risk factor. Thus, feces is considered ultimate personal information. In the human intestine, there are hundreds or more types of commensal microbes, or approximately 100 trillion, which have a close relationship with the host health condition. From feces, the structure and function of the gut microbiota can be analyzed by the metagenomics and the metabolomics. And by integrating these data, they can grasp information on a person's specific gut environment. The stool analysis developed by Project Associate Professor Fukuda and his team makes full use of unique metabologonomics technology. As for a few of the major achievements, they were the first in the world to use a type of probiotic bifidobacteria to produce acetate in the gut for the prevention of E. coli 0157 lethal infection through upregulation of gut epithelial barrier function. They were also able to elucidate the previously mysterious mechanism of how gut microbiota derived butyrate suppresses allergy and colitis through the promotion of differentiation of regulatory T cells. With this cutting edge technology, project associate professor Fukuda launched a venture company that performs stool analysis for services related to preventative medicine. By collecting feces from around the world and converting it to valuable health information, they aim to contribute to a disease-free society. So Fukuda published a couple of papers on metabolites produced by gut microbacteria, uh, acetate, lactate, and uh, butylate. And finally, uh, the spiva, that's a spider silk. Possessing both strength and flexibility, spider silk is a dream material. Researchers all over the world have long attempted its practical production, but it was thought to be impossible. To produce spider silk using microorganisms, this was the original idea of a group of researchers in their 20s from the Institute for Advanced Biosciences at Keio University set out to accomplish and succeeded at making happen. This is our synthetic spider silk. Not only is it beautiful, but it's lightweight and it stretches. The synthetic spider silk, Kumonos, astonished the scientific community. Extensive testing has shown that natural spider silk clearly far outperforms existing fibers in both strength and flexibility. Kumonos was developed to share those powerful traits. The raw material is protein. Because it uses fermentation to produce silk, it is a sustainable new material that doesn't rely on non-renewable resources. Instead of using actual spiders to produce our silks, we came up with a method to extract the genes from spiders and put them into microbes to produce silks through a fermentation process. That being said, the amount of DNA for spider silk is colossal. To find the optimal DNA, this institutes unparalleled genome informatics and other fundamental technological research powered creative and original results like these. 
And so it was born, the second bio-venture company from their institute, Spiber. In 2015, a next-generation pilot line commenced operation. It's expected to have applications in a wide range of fields, including the automobile, aeronautic, and medical industries. Spider silk can be produced through a very low energy process using no oil. We want to make a better, more sustainable future with our materials. Hopes are high for the new material to make a major impact on big business. Okay, so um, there are many kinds of spider silk and their physical characteristics are different among them. And let's see, basically this, there is a trade-off between elasticity and the strength. And spider silk is made of fibroin proteins and uh, its physical property is based heavily on amino acid sequence. So um, we could design um, DNA sequence, um, nucleotide sequence, and then produce DNA chemically and then put it into a micro and then produce proteins and then uh, material production and uh, prototyping and testing and then feedback to uh, uh, gene design. And uh, this fibroin protein uh, can be um, <clears throat> put in the form of not only uh, fiber but also film or gel or sponge form. Okay, so um, in 2001, there was only one building, small building here. And in 2006, um, new building was built. And now you are in this building. This building is built in 2011. And then Spiber uh, built a factory in 2013, and then a bigger factory, six times bigger than this one, uh, built in 2015. And then by 2018, there will be more um, facility, research facility, and then hotel and the housing, and then a school for small kids. And they will be made of wood, local wood. So um, should be, uh, I, I'm hoping that, uh, that this uh, science park will be very nice looking. Okay, uh, let me uh, just uh, finish my talk by talking about food. Tsuroka, the best Japanese food, why? Well, uh, Tsuroka city was selected by UNESCO, uh, one of the creative cities and uh, uh, there are only eight cities around the world, and Tsuroka was selected in 2014. Okay, so I hope that you will enjoy your stay in Tsuroka and in Japan. Thank you very much. <laughs>